Hi, this is Carrie Brownstein. This is DJ Premier. This is Darren Aronofsky. You got the Rizzo right here. Rose McGowan. Right here. Hey. Taisha Tyler. The Tribe Called Quest. Fred Armisen. Fritz Paul. Javier Munoz. Seth Meyers. Frankie Cosmos. Flying Lotus. Hi, we're Haim, and you're listening to the Talk House Podcast. Ow! Hello and welcome to the Talk House Podcast. I'm Josh Modell. On today's episode, we've got two leading lights of modern psychedelic indie rock, Melody Prochet and Leela Romani. Prochet is the creative force behind Melody's Echo Chamber, whose evocative name is taken from a dream she once had. Her debut album under the name, which Prochet recorded with help from Tame Impala's Kevin Parker, was released in 2012. She has since released two more full lengths while bouncing around the planet and raising children. The new one, Emotional Eternal, was partly inspired by Prochet's move from Paris to the idyllic quiet of the Swiss Alps. It features assists from members of the Swedish band Dunyan, though it's more spare and stripped down than that might suggest, and more spare than her past work, too. Check out a little bit of Alma the Voyage from Emotional Eternal. of psych in there, along with echoes of bands like Stereo Lab, right? Lila Romani of the New York band Crumb did, and Melody Prochet's music influenced what Romani wanted to do in her band, too. Crumb got going while its members were still in college in 2016, but really picked up speed with their debut full-length, Jinx, which came out in 2019. Crumb released a second album, Ice Melt, in 2021, further incorporating jazzy rhythms into their psychedelic stew. Check out a little bit of BNR from Ice Melt. conversation, the mutual admirers talk about their personal lives, including Prochet's side gig as an art therapist, as well as Romani's childhood growing up near the Gowanus Canal. They chat about Coachella, grinding versus floating, and Prochet's favorite American city, which will almost certainly surprise you. Enjoy. I am kind of following all the the traveling you're doing. The drama. <laughs> but no, it's it's so intense for you guys. It's... It was a crazy few weeks. We flew into to Berlin and then we were there for a few days and then traveling through Germany and we got to Brussels and I was sick and I, you know, tested positive for COVID. And then we had to like cancel the rest of the show. We were supposed to play Paris the next day, I think. So you didn't make it to Paris in the We end. didn't make it. It was really sad. Uh, we, so sad. We had a lot of friends coming to the show and stuff. I, I had to stay in Brussels because you can't fly back to the U.S. right now if you're positive for COVID. So it was just me because one of my other bandmates got it, but then was like, He wasn't sick, so he just went home immediately. So I was in this, like, purgatory Brussels hotel room for seven days. Could you get out in town or you had to stay in the hotel room? I went on a lot of walks. I, like, I think I went to every park that was in Brussels. (laughs) (laughs) That has some nice ones. Have you been to Brussels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we played a a show in um, the Botanique, I think it was called. That's where we were supposed to play. Yeah, yeah, it's super nice. Next time, you'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> I was actually staying across from the venue, so I would just like pass it every day. <laughs> I don't know if you went, there is a, I have a memory of a, a super great Turkish restaurant just across and where it, there are some amazing Turkish music. Yeah, <laughs> I went to so many like Middle Eastern restaurants. <laughs> I probably went to all of them. It was a strange place to be a suspended <laughs> but it makes me resonate with uh, your music at some time it has some uh, uh, a strange like purgatory kind of vibe like it's dis- disturbing just <laughs> disturbing just very subtly disturbing me actually me 
because it's, <laughs> I'm from a classical side and that's what I love and it makes it resonate in a piece of my mind when I hear that, how you distort your melodies. It's really brilliant. Uh, and I, that's you. what I like, that kind of little bit more urban and kind of odd sometimes, but very beautifully calculated. It's really wonderful. I love that vibe. Thank you. Yeah, I started working on a song at one point there. I think I think it'll at some point it'll come out. <laughs> My Brussels song. <laughs> the Brussels I was just song. like, I need to I need to do something because I'm so bored. Do you uh, write your demos actually? How do you on what kind of? Um, I use Ableton, and I have like a little makeshift studio in my house here. I know I live with my parents, parents in Brooklyn and like the, the house I grew up in. Yes. So I have like my brother's old bedroom is, is where I have my music stuff. So I'll, I'll work there. But in Brussels, it was really bare bones because I didn't even have a, like a keyboard. I had my guitar, but no amp. Do you play on your Ableton on your little keys? Yeah, you can use the keyboard. Yeah, it's kinda, it's kinda I fun. do that. <laughs> And I'll like download drum sounds from from Reddit or something. <laughs> it was a fun little thing, but I'm glad to be back. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm I'm actually leaving again tomorrow for Coachella and some like Mexico shows uh-huh. and a few West Coast. It's only ten shows, so can you do the the two weekend? Basically. Yeah, the two weekend. Have you done Coachella? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've done that. Oh damn. And, How was uh, it? <laughs> oh, I really enjoyed it. That, the, the gig was great. And my favorite performance was at Pepe's and Harriet. Oh, yeah. In Junior Town that was in between the two weekends. But Coachella was, uh, it's the odd place. Yeah. I'm not very comfortable with this whole environment, but the show was fun. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a hellish desert environment. <laughs> Everyone's told me to wear like a mask for the the dust i don't know if you guys use computer i, I know you, you use the sp for for like i i've got the same thing but that we have we have midi board and computer and the sandstorm can be a bit tricky Ooh. you need to really think about the sand <laughs> i didn't even think about that the sand like gets in the keyboard if if you get a little sandstorm situation but it's never really it happened once though but wow. anyway <laughs> Anything can happen in the desert. Truly. What have you been up to the past uh, month? I know you're putting out a new album. The new album, yeah, exciting. A lot of promoting, but uh, mostly my uh, my studies in art therapy, my mm. work with... Uh, I work in a retirement home to do a musical therapy and art therapy experiment. Oh, really? So that's two days a week. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. It keeps me grounded in, you know, kind of uh, ordinary reality. I love the ordinary, extraordinary, ordinary kind of living style and try to cultivate that kind of poetry in my life. So is it like one retirement home where you go to different ones? For now, it's just one. But then I would like to, to work in different environments with maybe, you know, autistic people or kids or uh, whatever people need some help that type. Wow. I would like to keep on working on the special project. We Yes, <laughs> we were working on it. And then like, for me, like just chaos started happening and like life. <laughs> it's same here. It's okay. I think it will happen. It's just a matter it will. It will. Of, of being slow and uh, welcoming the, the slow uh, pace. <laughs> it's so interesting because we've never really like worked with like anyone outside the four of us, our bubble. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was such a it's strange, like, exciting, yeah, yeah, strange. Refresh. Refreshing, really, really refreshing. Yeah. But weird because I don't have anything at home to work. So it's so lo fi. I am kind of yeah. ashamed when I sent you no. my phone. <laughs> it's, totally it's, understand. No, it's terrible because I don't have any tools, but I think it's also kind of fun to be a professional musician and have nothing to work with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you usually like when you go record the record you go to a studio in in the city you live in where do you where do you live in france i live in the in the alps uh, of high provence oh, wow. so i only work at the uh, stockholm studio with my my collaborators oh okay 
my new collaborators. And so I go to Stockholm for a few sessions and then we work in distance remotely. And I also work on Appleton. Is it a very small town? Like not a lot of people? Yeah. Yeah, it's small. Wow. It's remote. It's small, but just enough to not be too isolated. Yeah. Because I, yes, struggle that tendency to to be, to, to go to isolation too much. So I, I just try to not isolate myself. <laughs> I was just thinking as well about your music that it, it really resonates with a piece of my mind. And at the same time, I, I, I sense it. it's more urban somehow. How are environments, natural environments, inspire you? I grew up like in the most intense urban environment, which is yeah. New York City. Yes. And I like went to high school in, in Manhattan. And when I think of the things that shape my personality and identity, it's definitely just growing up here is, is a huge part of it and obviously feeds into the the music so much my other band members um grew up kind of outside of the city in the suburbs but they would come in they would come in here a lot probably and and then our drummer grew up in california in the bay area we recorded only in jinx was in new york we recorded in like the really hot summertime <laughs> which, which <laughs> was like yeah it was intense and then Ice Melt was in L.A. also in the summer. But I feel like, especially our first EP, definitely was heavily inspired by the neighborhood I grew up in, which is around the Gowanus Canal, which is like the most polluted canal in the country or something. <laughs> but it's it's really like kind of a magical place. My mom is a visual artist. She works in like right on the canal. So I would go there all the time. Awesome. But the neighborhood is changing a lot and they're, they're about to build like 60 high rises right on the canal. And they're advertising it as like waterfront property. So it's, it's definitely a weird, in a weird sort of flux right now. But yeah, that's where I, where I came from. Where did you grow up? Uh, not far from where I, I moved uh, recently in Aix-en-Provence is the uh, Provence, uh, south of France, a mm -hmm. very tiny village as well. Uh, it's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why it's interesting. Do you feel like that feeds into the music at all? I think it's uh, dancing in my style somehow and sprinted in the music, of course. But but I don't think uh, I, I I think you could just you could just create other worlds and nobody yeah. could really tell. Uh, where you're from, actually. So it's kind of both. What's your relationship to Stockholm? I moved there when I, I met uh, that band Dungen. I don't know if mm -hmm. you if you know that band. I think I've heard of them. A psychedelic rock band from Stockholm. And I heard their music uh, because my first producer was a huge fan of their work. Mm -hmm. And when I, I played Levitation Festival in France, in Angers, we just saw each other backstage and we recognized ourselves and uh, I was looking for uh, for new people to create music with and I we just really got along super well naturally so I just moved there for a year <laughs> and that was the complete opposite from where I recorded my other record in Australia because it was just like majestic very epic uh nature but very cold extremely cold and white and pure and it's just a, like a, a new page you know where in Australia was that? Australia was before, so that was really hot and very oh, warm. Oh, okay. You're saying <laughs> and then, yeah, Stockholm exactly. was, was it a, was the complete opposite of that. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, my first time going to kind of that part of the world. We just played in um, Copenhagen, which is really close to Sweden, I think. Yes, of course. But felt the vibe like of Scandinavia, yeah, <laughs> which I never had. Very clean and like pristine. Yeah. Did you travel before you were a musician? I grew up going to Malaysia like every wow. two years because my dad's side of the family all lives there because he immigrated from there when he was 25 to here, but no one else in his family like left Malaysia. So we, wow, we, yeah, we go there. I haven't gone there though in I think almost six years now though because of just the pandemic and, and life. But it's a crazy, it's a long it's a long trip. It's like 24 hours of <laughs> traveling. <laughs> and then when I, you know, was in college, I, I went to Europe and drove around. We drove from like Belgium through 
Slovenia and Italy did like a, I, Euro, a Euro trip. <laughs> you went to Slovenia. That's big. I just went there actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah last month. I really enjoyed it. What were you doing there? We were just on a road trip. Uh, we went with uh, our children to Venice, and then we went to Slovenia. We wanted to see the big caves, uh, the natural caves. Uh, they're one of the biggest in Europe. There, it's, it's like cathedral of uh, of caves. Yeah, how do you say caves? Yeah, cave. yeah caves. Caves. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but they're like crazy sculptured, and they're like incredibly long. And there's a train that go under Earth, and it's oh, wow. intense, really intense. <laughs> I never heard of that. I did. We when we were on that trip, we went to Croatia to these like yeah. lakes. Have you heard of the? It's like the Plitvice lakes. Plitvice, Plitvice, yeah, they're so beautiful. We went there also last year. I think we went in the wrong season though, because I've heard you can like swim in them, but it was way too cold. I think they don't allow it anymore because of people just polluting it too much. Right? Uh, I'm not that's, sure. I'm not that's sure. a bummer. But Slovenia had some great lakes. I, I need to go back. I'm kind of like traumatized right now by traveling. <laughs> I've been having like all these travel stress dreams <laughs> leading up to the tour. I don't know when the next time I'll go to Europe is. <laughs> I got these from uh, from visa getting because I needed always visas to go to the mm-hmm. United States to play. Right. And you didn't know if you were going to have it. So we had to plan a tour and then you didn't get your visa and it was canceled. And that was the best annoying. Oh my God, that's horrible. But you, you just, you gotta let go, but still it's stressful. Yeah, every, touring right now is like, feels like such a, just a risk that's like crazy to take. But <laughs> so many musicians are just doing it and having their things canceled. When was the last time you did a live, a live show? Oh, that was a long time ago. Uh, I think it might have been, I have no idea, maybe 2015 or 16. 16? Yeah, it just causes me too much uh, anxiety. I feel you. <laughs> so, for, I, I haven't found a, a way to do it, you know, gently and not care about anything. And I, I'm just too perfect perfectionist and I want everything to be under control and it's, of course impossible yeah it also seems like you're pretty busy with with life and stuff yeah my family and and you know once you've kind of you've done a little tour of it of this lifestyle and if it doesn't suit me I I think it's interesting to for me it's been interesting to go explore other unknown worlds yeah the thing I love in music is more of the like writing and recording and that side of it as opposed to the performing side because for me there are two different jobs yeah it really is i feel like i figured out how to do it but it's been a long journey <laughs> but you guys are impressively independent so i mean yeah that's such freedom somehow how, how do you feel about it it's nice there's still a pressure to play a lot of shows which can be stressful but it's cool not having you know a label telling you like okay time for your next your next album are you ready <laughs> do, do you feel uh, you missed the structure or well i don't know because we've never we've never been on a label so I, maybe the structure would be nice i don't know <laughs> but we set all the terms i think it would freak me out to have to like be on a contract where you had to make four albums or something yeah feels like it takes the the magic away from uh, the music but I don't know. Maybe what are you on a label, right? Yeah, I was on Fat Possum, and my European label Domino me in a core album soundtrack as well. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> kind of, but I I, I hear you. I I, th- I just think you can you can just create the situation you want to create. I think it's fine, but it depends what you decide to do. If you want to do the whole cycle thing, yeah, it's it's probably not that like different our process because we still have like managers and stuff like that <laughs> How, you have two two kids yes it is. what ages are they uh five and three wow yeah 
so tiny. My boyfriend has uh, two little sisters. One of them is five and one is one. <laughs> and I, I never had like kids growing up like in my life. So they're like the first children I've interacted with. Such a good age, five. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's very joyful and very alive, full of life. And that really changed my life, actually. <laughs> Has being a mother changed your music making process or the way you think about music? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's very open-ended. But <laughs> it actually structured my, uh, my reverie. You know, because you probably do that when you are inspired and you want to make music. It just the time just is different, and you just you can work for a night and kind of get lost or escape and create your other world. And you just you know, you can almost get stuck in your in your reverie. And um, now uh, with uh, with my kids, I just have okay, I have three hours to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, I need to want to work in the three hours and I need to be very productive and also go to the essence of it. And it's actually on the new record, it, it reflects that kind of essential and simplicity because it's very opposite to how I used to work. I, I love layers, I love sculpts, I love a lot of noise. And now it's it kind of really shaped it differently <laughs> in that sense. It's more like stripped down. Yeah, more simple. But it's also a, it's also something I wanted to to explore because of my last record's delirium. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to to take everything out and see how that felt. It felt great. So <laughs> it could, that could go either way. If you have like limited time to work on music, sometimes for me that actually like motivates me to to do it more, as opposed to having so much open ended time. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it's, I mean, I would be exhausted. I don't know if I could do, I could do what you're doing. <laughs> well, surely you would feel, how old are you, Lila? <laughs> how old? I'm yeah. um, 27. 27. About to turn 28 in June. How about you? I'm 34. 35, actually. I just turned 35. So what, what's your guys' future months looking like? We're taking a a break from uh, touring, thank God, <laughs> after this this one. So I think we'll have the whole sum, summer and fall to work on some new music, which is exciting. We're maybe going to go like go somewhere in the country or something and write, which sounds mm-hmm. that's like ideal. And where are you going to record? We're trying to figure it out now, like economically it makes more sense to do in in new york or la because three of us live in new york and one of us lives in in la but it would also be nice to to go somewhere and get get out of the hecticness of the of the city for like a week so we'll probably jump around do one in new york do one in maybe upstate new york and see what happens we don't have much of like a a plan right now just kind of open-ended working on stuff seeing where it takes us, which is a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you feel like the city has kind of, uh, has become more hectic? It's so what I'm used to that I, I almost don't even <laughs> register it anymore. But then when I go somewhere else, I'm like, oh, New York is insane. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. People are are just running around, just on the grind. Everyone is like grinding so hard and there and my I feel like my um lifestyle is much more just floating and you know not that not not on the grind always <laughs> or or very intense periods of working and then just relaxing so it's kind of it's weird to to be here sometimes that's why I like LA a bit more because it feels like people there are more floating floating around do you like the the floating yeah I do. I like floating. But I also love, I love living here. I, I was in, I was living in LA for like the first part of the pandemic. And um, then I moved back last May back home. And I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I returned. <laughs> I was, I was gone for too long. Yeah. Have you ever lived in Paris or another city? Yeah, I've lived in Paris for uh, maybe six years although I was always kind of moving around 
but uh, but for me the city is too intense i just i wasn't inspired or i, I didn't create anything worth it uh, in the city because i am mm. hypersensitive because i think i grew up in the, in the countryside so um and then i yeah i lived i lived in perth in australia for about two years and then mm. in stockholm and in california a little bit as well in, in la or yeah in la where in la did you live it was echo park okay Mm. that's not far from where I was yeah I really enjoy the LA actually as well also there is a weird uh, thing as well going on with image of, you know but yeah and superficial kind of stuff yeah the people are not the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think the oh, people in New York, New York are better <laughs> but it's so it's so like everything about it is so kind of just beautiful that it's hard to it's hard to not like it. No, it's beautiful. I really enjoyed going there and the nature around LA is epic. It's so beautiful. It's so crazy. And I really enjoyed touring America. I, I did a tour with uh, for the debut album and did a tour uh, with the Ravenet, I think. It was the first time we toured and that was really magical. I have such great memories of the landscapes. Damn. What was your favorite place? There is, there is a lot. I think Detroit. Yeah. Detroit was Detroit? Whoa, I didn't expect intense. That. Intense. It was actually intense the uh, ghost town and, yeah. and the smoke going out of the I don't know, for us it was very crazy. We had so many great memories. I think the last tour uh with the Coachella and uh, the El Rey and the Roxy and all this stuff in LA was really fun. And the people were amazing. Mexico was also. You did Mexico? Yeah. Mexico we, City? We did just one festival, like a big festival. And the people were amazing. <laughs> so. We did like this psychedelic music festival in Mexico City, in like the mountains yeah. outside yeah. of Mexico City. It was so crazy. We got offered that and like so many great stuff. And I was like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was this festival, like Desert Days or all these things sound so fun. I don't know, it's a shame I didn't do it before. They're fun. What else? Uh, you have any other questions? <laughs> yeah, we are just doing our little chat, chit chat here. I have no idea how much time has, <laughs> has passed. <laughs> I could just, I, I just want to say how much uh, from music blew my mind a little earlier this year because I've I've been sitting in silence for, for, I guess, two or three years. I didn't listen or play any music. And, and you know, their music just kind of found me like like a book finds you in the library somehow. You just reach mm. your hand to a title and it's just like, oh, this one resonates immensely. And so uh, it just kind of impulsed me into creativity. And I think it's going to probably inspire the next record if there is any. Uh, so, uh, yeah, amazing work. and very inspiring so so thank you for your work thank you so much when you messaged us it was it was like a crazy full circle moment because <laughs> we were like obsessed with your music when we were making our first ep we were just like constantly listening to it and it was a huge inspiration and then like i don't know set six five six years later to to have you discover our music <laughs> yeah, and be like, this is inspiring me now. It was, it was like, this is, this is wild. <laughs> yeah. That's a very full, full circle. And it's, yeah. The circularity of life is, uh, is the theme of my new record. Actually. It's pretty, oh. it's pretty odd. It's pretty cool. Well, thank you for listening. I'm excited about maybe working on something in the future. Yeah, me too. <laughs> totally. It, it will happen. It will happen. Give the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you. Yeah, same. Thanks for listening to the Talk House podcast, and thanks to Melody Prochet and Lila Romani for chatting. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe to Talk House on your favorite platform and tell your friends that we're the best. The episode you've just listened to was produced by Myron Kaplan, and the Talk House theme is composed and performed by The Range. See you next time.